Well, to many people watching around the world, the official news from the EU's Earth Observation Programme may not come as the biggest surprise. But the Copernicus Climate Change Service has declared the month of July the hottest ever recorded on the planet. In a month of extreme heat waves across the Northern Hemisphere and temperature records broken in China too, the latest data shows average global temperatures were 16.95 degrees Celsius, which scientists say is significant rise from previous highs. Well, we can speak to Vincent Henri uh, Pouc, the director of the Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service, uh, and to get a sense of the context of this, uh, Vincent, your records go back to 1940. Tell us about what this data tells us and the patterns you're seeing. Yes, so we have a, a climate monitoring product which is called Reanalysis, which uh, provide. Uh, uh, consistent information since 1940. So this allows us to uh, assess anomalies and to uh, to compare uh, really like for like. And uh, this uh, this data set uh, allows us to 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 uh, to say with confidence that this month of July, as you explained, has been uh, the hottest on record in our data set. But also looking at the trends uh, since uh, measurements, meteorological measurements exist. Does the data give you any trajectory that continues to, to allow us to say what we could be experiencing in just a few years' time? Yes, as, as you rightly said, uh, it's, it's a big concern, but it's not a surprise. The, the driver for, for these hot temperatures and these record being broken year after year is the, are the emissions of uh, uh, CO2 and methane uh, from, uh, from fossil fuel. And these, uh, they continue to, to increase year after year. Uh, it's 37.5 billion tons of CO2 that the world is emitting. And uh, as long as uh, this figure will not drop to zero, uh, unfortunately, uh, this, uh, this tendency that we are seeing uh, will, uh, will, will, will continue. Even in Europe, for instance, uh, between 2021 and 22, uh, the, uh, there, there has been a little decrease by 0.8%, but it has been still 2.8 billion tonnes of CO2 emitted by EU27. So you're quite clear on what you see as you know, the, the, the blame to attribute um, with, with climate change and global warming. But Vincent, when you look at the data, was this a shock? Was this something that, you know, since 2015, we've had warnings since the Paris, Paris Climate Change Summit about increasing uh, worries, not sticking to targets? Was this out of the blue, this figure, or did you see it coming? Well, we see the trend. What is a shock is really the, the 0.32 uh, increase in the record. The, the previous record was, was not long ago, it was 20. 19, but 0.32 degrees excess uh, is, is really a surprise. Uh, it means that actually we are uh, at 1.5 degree hotter than pre-industrial for a month of July, so the target that the countries of the world have set for themselves uh, in, the, in the Paris Agreement. So this jump this year is, is a bit unexpected, uh, also because uh, the uh, El Nino event uh, in, in the Pacific has just started, so it's not uh, yet very hot uh, uh, temperatures in, in, in the equatorial Pacific. Uh, and uh, the sea, uh, especially the North Atlantic, has been uh, uh, warming a lot. Uh, for July, a full half degree hotter than uh, previously. And, and uh, we, uh, we think that this... Uh, hot uh, oceanic temperature, or yeah. much hotter than temperature uh, than, 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 than in the past, is the key driver for this, uh, for this uh, record. But it's still, still a surprise uh, quantitatively that uh, 0.3 degrees, uh, the record has been broken yeah. by country. So you saw it coming, but maybe not to this extent this soon. Vincent, thank you for talking to us. Vincent Henri Pouc, the director of the Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service. Thank you.